The armed Islamic group was one of the two main Islamist insurgents groups that fought the Algerian government and army in the Algerian Civil War. It was created from smaller armed groups following the 1992 military coup and arrest and internment of thousands of officials in the Islamist Islamic. Salvation Front Party after that party won the first round of parliamentary elections in December 1991. It was led by a succession of emirs who were killed or arrested one after another. Unlike the other main armed groups, the Mir and later the AIS, in its pursuit of an Islamic state the Jia sought not to pressure the government into concessions but to destabilize and overthrow it. 2. Purge the land of the ungodly. Its slogan inscribed on all communiques was, no agreement, no truce, no dialogue. The group desired to create an atmosphere of general insecurity and employed kidnapping, assassination, and bombings, including car bombs and targeted not only security forces but civilians. Between 1992 and 1998, the GIA conducted a violent campaign of civilian massacres, sometimes wiping out entire villages in its area of operation. It attacked and killed other Islamists that left the GIA or attempted to negotiate with the government. It also targeted foreign civilians living in Algeria, killing more than 100 expatriate men and women in the country. The group established a presence outside Algeria, in France, Belgium, Britain, Italy and the United States, and launched terror attacks in France in late 1994. The undisputed principal Islamist force in Algeria in 1994, by 1996, militants were deserting, in droves, alienated by its execution of civilians and Islamist leaders. In 1999, a government amnesty law motivated large numbers of jihadish to repent. The remnants of the Jia proper were hunted down over the next two years, leaving a splinter group the Salafist Group for Preaching and Combat, which announced its support for Al-Qaeda in October 2003. The Jia was and is considered a terrorist organization by the governments of Algeria and France. To what extent the group was infiltrated and manipulated by Algerian security services is disputed. History Founding according to Algerian veterans of the Afghan Jihad who founded the Jia, the idea of forming an armed group to fight Jihad against the Algerian government was developed not after the coup but in 1989 after leaders of the Islamic armed movement of Mustafa Bui Ali were freed from prison, but was not acted on due to the spectacular electoral political success of the FIS. Early in 1992, Mansour Meliani, a former aide to Bui Ali, along with many Afghans, broke with his former friend Abdul Qader Harisay and left the Mir, founding his own jihadi group around July 1992. Meliani was arrested in July and executed in August 1993. Meliani was replaced by Muhammad Alal, a.k.a. M.O.H. Lavei, who was killed on 1 September 1992 by the Algerian military when they attacked a meeting held to unify command of the jihad. Abdelhak Layada Levey was replaced in January 1993 by Abdelhak Layada, who declared his group independent of the Fis and Miram not obedient to its orders. It adopted the radical Omar El Yulmi as a spiritual guide, and Layada affirmed that political pluralism is equivalent to sedition. He also believed jihad in Algeria was fardine, or an individual obligation of adult male Muslims. Layada threatened not just security forces but journalists and the families of Algerian soldiers. From its inception on, the GIA called for and implemented the killing of anyone collaborating with or supporting the authorities, including government employees such as teachers and civil servants. Layada did not last long and was arrested in Morocco in May 1993. Besides the Jia, the other major branch of the Algerian resistance was the Islamic armed movement. It was led by the ex-soldier, General, Abdelkader Chabouti, and was well organized and structured and favored a long-term jihad, targeting the state and its representatives and based on a guerrilla campaign, like that of the War of Independence. 
from prison, Ali Ben Hajj issued a fatwa giving the Mir his blessing. Jafar al Afghani in August 1993, C. Fala Jafar, aka Murad C. Ahmed, aka Jafar al Afghani. A 30-year-old black marketer with no education beyond primary school, became Gia Amir. Violence escalated under Jofar, as did the GIA's base of support outside of Algeria. Under him, the group named and assassinated specific journalists and intellectuals, saying that the journalists who fight against Islamism through the pen will perish by the sword. The Gia explicitly affirmed that it did not represent the armed wing of the FIS, and issued death threats against several FIS and MIA members, including MIA's Herase and FIST's Kabir and Red Jam. About the time Al-Afghani took power of GIA, a group of Algerian jihadists returning from Afghanistan came to London. Together with Islamist intellectual Abu Qatada, they started up a weekly magazine, Use Rat al as a GIA propaganda outlet. Abu Qatada provided the intellectual and ideological firepower to justify GIA actions, and the journal became a trusted source of news and information about the GIA for Islamists around the world. The GIA soon broadened its attacks to civilians who refused to live by their prohibitions and then foreigners living in Algeria. A hostage released on 31 October 1993 carried a message ordering foreigners to leave the country. We are giving you one month. Anyone who exceeds that period will be responsible for his own sudden death. By the end of 1993, 26 foreigners had been killed. In November 1993, Sheikh Mohammed Bouslimani, a popular figure who was prominent in Hamas party of Mafoud Nana, was kidnapped and executed after refusing to issue a fatwa endorsing the GIA's tactics. Jafar was killed February 26. 1994, Chera Gausma of Chera Gausma, a.k.a. Abu Abdullah Ahmed, became Amir March 10, 1994. Under him, the Jia reached its high-water mark and became the undisputed principal Islamist force in Algeria. In May, Islamist leaders Abdurrahman Redjam, Mohammed said, the exiled Anwar Haddam. And the MEI said Maklufi joined the GIA, a blow to the fist and surprise since the GIA had been issuing death threats against the three since November 1993. This was interpreted by many observers as either the result of intra fist competition or as an attempt to change the GIA's course from within. On 26 August, the group declared of Caliphanite, or Islamic government for Algeria, with Gausma as commander of the faithful. Mohammed said as head of government, the US-based Haddam as foreign minister, and Mekloufi as provisional interior minister. However, the very next day said Mekloufi announced his withdrawal from the GIA, claiming that the GIA had deviated from Islam and that this caliphate was an effort by Muhammad said to take over the GIA. And Haddam soon afterwards denied ever having joined it, asserting that this caliphate was an invention of the security services. The GIA continued attacking its usual targets, notably assassinating artists such as Kep Hasni, and in late August added a new one to its list, threatening schools which allowed mixed classes, music, gym for girls, or not wearing hijab with arson. He was killed in combat on September 26, 1994. Jamel Zitoni Chera Gausma was eventually succeeded by Jamel Zitoni who became Gia Head on October 27, 1994. Zitoni, 30-year-old son of a poultry merchant had very limited religious education but was adept at killing French citizens. Zitoni extended the GIA's attacks on civilians to French soil beginning with the hijacking of Air France Flight 8969 at the end of December 1994 and continuing with several bombings and attempted bombings throughout 1995. In Algeria itself, he continued likewise with car bombs, assassinations of musicians, sportsmen, and unveiled women as well as the usual victims. In February 1995 it issued a communique ordering that, for every pure Muslim woman arrested by the government, 
an apostate's wife would be executed. non gia Islamists such as Muslim Brotherhood members and Jazirists were condemned as godless and ordered to repent according to a precise procedure. Even at this stage, the seemingly counterproductive nature of many of its attacks led to speculation that the group had been infiltrated by Algerian secret services. The region south of Algiers, in particular, came to be virtually dominated by the Gia, they called it the Liberated Zone. Later it would be known as the Triangle of Death. During this period, judging from its London-based magazine Al Ansa, it worked out ever broader ideological justifications for killing civilians. With the help of fatwas from such figures as Abu Qatada, reports of battles between the AIS and Gia increased, and the Gia reiterated its death threats against FIS and AIS leaders, claiming to be the sole prosecutor of jihad, and angered by their attempts to negotiate a settlement with the government. On the 11th of July, they assassinated a co-founder of FIS, Abdul Baki Serouer, in Paris during the 1995 election. The GIA threatened to kill anyone who voted, but turnout was high among the pious middle class. Soon afterwards, the GIA was shaken by internal dissension. Shortly after the election, its leadership killed Islamist leaders who had joined the GIA. In December, the GIA killed the number three figure in the May who had returned to the AIS, Asdin Bar. In January, Abdurrahak Red Jam announced he wanted to rejoin the AIS and was killed. The death of Muhammad said followed in November 1995. The two men's deaths were not announced in Al Ansar Journal until mid December 1995, where the GIA blamed the killings on the security forces. But a few issues later in January 4 and 11 announced that it had in fact killed the two for being members of the heretic Jazarist sect and for plotting a coup d'etat. Other Islamists suggested that they had objected to the GIA's indiscriminate violence, considerable uproar and accusations of manipulation of GIA by security service followed. Militants began to desert in droves. Mustafa Qatali, Ali Ben Hajar, and Hassan Hatib's factions all refused to recognize Zitoni's leadership starting around late 1995, although they would not formally break away until somewhat later. On May 31, 1996 Al Ansar suspended publication demanding an explanation from the GIA, and a week later it and two other Islamist groups announced their withdrawal of support for Zitoni. In the summer of 1996 the GIA finally released a video of two friends of the victims backquote confessing backquote to the plot and humbly requesting summary execution for themselves. In addition the GIA pledged to fight the AIS as an enemy, particularly in the West. Full-scale battles between them became common. In July 1996, Zitoni was killed probably by Islamists seeking vengeance for his killing of Muhammad Said and Abdurazak Rejem, or by one of the breakaway factions, Ali Ben Hajar's Medea Brigade, later to become the AIS-aligned Islamic League for DAWA and Jihad, and was succeeded by Antazu Abre. Jamel Zitoni had earned notoriety for such acts as the killing of the seven monks of Tiburin in March, but his successor would prove to be far bloodier. Gia in France The Algerian state pursued a number of strategies against the Gia. One was to encourage France to take an active part in the fight against the networks of the Gia in France and thus to cut off its principal means of support abroad, to prevent this from happening, brought a campaign of bombings, hijackings, etc., to France, in hopes the French government would conclude that the price of terrorism within France was too high, and would withdraw its support from the Algerian regime in hasten its collapse. The GIA's first act was to hijack a Air France Flight 8969 which was due to fly from Algiers to Paris in December 1994. During their hijack, the GIA announced we are the soldiers of mercy, intelligence provided by Omar Naziri, and a police raid of a safe house discovered their plan was to crash it on Paris. 
a plan prevented when the GIGN stormed the plane at Marseille. The GIA conducted a series of bombings in France from 1995 to 1996. Analysis of a bomb with a failed trigger mechanism made it possible to identify a conspirator, Khaled Kelkel, who was shot and killed by French gendarmes on 29 September 1995. In late 1999, several GIA members were convicted by a French court for the 1995 bombing campaign. After the death of Zitoni in 1998, prior to the World Cup, France in collaboration with other European countries launched a vast preventive operation against the GIA. About 100 alleged members of the group were arrested throughout Europe. In Belgium, security forces seized weapons, detonators and forged identity papers. On the 11th of June 1999, the GIA announced a jihad on French territory in a threatening letter addressed to the media. Antazu Abre in Takfir Antazu Abre was the longest serving emir, was nominated by a faction of the GIA, considered questionable by the others. The 26-year-old activist was a close confidant of Sitoni and continued his policy of ever-increasing violence and redoubled purges. Zuabri opened his reign as emir by issuing a manifesto entitled The Sharp Sword, presenting Algerian society as resistant to jihad and lamented that the majority of the people had forsaken religion and renounced the battle against its enemies, but was careful to deny that the Jia had ever accused Algerian society itself of impiety. Convinced of Zuabri's Salafist orthodoxy, Egyptian veteran of the Afghan Jihad Abu Hamza restarted the Al Ansar Bulletin magazine in London. During the month of Ramadan, hundreds of civilians were killed in massacres, some with their throats cut. The massacres continued for months and culminated in August and September when hundreds of men, women and children were killed in the villages of Ray, Bantala, Beni Messers. Pregnant women were sliced open, children were hacked to pieces or dashed against walls, men's limbs were hacked off one by one, and, as the attackers retreated, they would kidnap young women to keep as sex slaves. The GIA issued a communique signed by Zuabri claiming responsibility for the massacres and justifying them, in contradiction to his manifesto, by declaring impious all those Algerians who had not joined its ranks. In London Abu Hamzu criticised the communique and two days later announced the end of his support and the closure of the bulletin. Cutting off GIA's communication with international Islamist community and the rest of the outside world. In Algeria, the slaughters drained the GIA of popular support. A week earlier the AIS insurgents announced it would declare a unilateral truce starting in October. These events marked the end of organized jihad in Algeria, according to one source although Zouabri was seldom heard of after this and the jihad, exhausted, massacres, continued unabated through 1998 led by independent emirs with added ingredients of vendetta and local dispute to the putative jihad against the government. Armed groups that had formerly belonged to the GIA continued to kill, some replacing jihad with simple banditry, others settling scores with the pro-government, patriots, or others, some enlisting themselves in the services of landowners and frightening illegal occupants off of property. In 1999 the Law on Civil Concord granting amnesty to fighters was officially rejected by the GIA but accepted by many rank-and-file Islamist fighters. An estimated 85% surrendered their arms and returned to civilian life. The Salafist group for preaching and combat splinter faction appears to have eclipsed the GIA since approximately 1998 and is currently assessed by the CIA to be the most effective armed group remaining inside Algeria. Both the GIA and GSPC leadership continue to proclaim their rejection of President Bouteflika's amnesty, but in contrast to the GIA, the GSPC has stated that it avoids attacks on civilians.
Zhu Abri was himself killed in a gun battle with security forces 9 February 2002. The Jia, torn by splits and desertions and denounced by all sides even in the Islamist movement, was slowly destroyed by army operations over the next few years. By the time of Anta Zhu Abri's death it was effectively incapacitated. End game in 1999, following the election of a new president, Abdulaziz Bouteflika, a new law gave amnesty to most guerrillas, motivating large numbers to repent and return to normal life. The violence declined substantially after Anta Zhu Abri was killed in 2002. Rashid Abu Torib succeeded him and was allegedly killed by close aides in July 2004. He was replaced by Bula Nour Ar Al Kil. On 7 April 2005, the Jia was reported to have killed 14 civilians at a fake roadblock. Three weeks later, on 29 April, Al Kil was arrested. Nordin Boudiafi was the last known emir of the Jia. He was arrested sometime in November 2004 and the Algerian government announced his arrest in early January 2005. A splinter group of the Jia that formed on the fringes of Kabylie in 1998, called the Salafist Group for Preaching and Combat, rejected the amnesty. It associated itself from the previous indiscriminate killing of civilians and reverted to the classic mere AIS tactics of targeting combatant forces. In October 2003, they announced their support for Al-Qaeda and in 2006, Ayman al-Zawahiri announced a blessed union between the two groups. In 2007, the group changed its name to Al-Qaeda in the Islamic Maghreb. It has focused on kidnapping for ransom as a means of raising funds and is estimated to have raised more than $50 million from 2003 to 2013.